About one in five Americans report some sort of hearing loss. But what's more alarming is there are even more people out there who don't have, who have a hearing problem they didn't know about. The National Hearing Test aims to change that. Reporter Barbara Brozier joins us now. Barbara, how does the test work? Well, Joe, it's the first scientifically verified hearing test administered over the phone. We all know someone who seems to have problems hearing. For me, that person is my dad, who is constantly asking people to repeat themselves. I had him take the test, and the results were surprising. My parents' living room is constantly filled with the sounds of rock and roll. This is Warren Zevon. My dad's always had a passion for music, and in his opinion, the louder the better. I can remember in college laying on my bed and putting a speaker next to each ear and then blasting the stereo in my ears and just laying there and listening to like that. He's also been to a lot of concerts during his lifetime. This picture was taken in Sedalia, Missouri, I believe. It was at a rock festival. I went there when I was much younger and had a lot more hair. We figured all that loud music, combined with him getting older, would affect his hearing. I cannot hear as well as I used to. I do have to kind of you know, make more of an effort to listen carefully. So we decided to put that theory to the test. Welcome to the National Hearing Test. Please enter the access code that you were given. The National Hearing Test is a $5 screening people can take over the phone. It was developed by scientists at Bloomington-based Communication Disorders Technology, and it's a test they never thought they'd see in their lifetimes. We were all brought up in, in hearing science to believe that you absolutely could not give a hearing test over the telephone uh, for the simple reasons that the bandwidth, the frequencies that it delivers, aren't wide enough to cover the usual bandwidth of the pure tones, the little beeps that are normally used in hearing tests. What makes the test work is that instead of pure tones, it uses speech to test hearing capacity. It takes about 10 minutes and tests hearing in both ears. During this test, you will hear three digit sequences such as 351, presented in a noisy background. If you were right, uh, it gets a little more difficult on the next presentation. And when you're wrong, it gets easier. Some people question the validity of an over-the-phone screening. The National Hearing Test isn't meant to replace an in-person visit to an audiologist, but it can help people determine whether or not they need to make an appointment. And the test has been scientifically verified. A number of people took the National Hearing Test and then followed that with a full uh, exam in a clinic. And the two uh, results were compared with each other. So far, about 80% of the people who've taken the test have had some sort of hearing problem. And scientists say there are a lot more with hearing loss who haven't been tested. When you read, you, um, and, and you start to lose your eyesight, you can tell right away because uh, things get blurry on the page and, and you know that there's only one reason that's happening is because your eyes are starting to go. Um, with hearing, it's a little bit more complicated because you don't really have that point of reference in the same way. Scientists say on average there's about a 10-year lapse between the time a person starts to notice hearing loss and when they seek help for the problem. The developers of the National Hearing Test want to help close that gap. You know, when you start saying, well, my wife mumbles, well, maybe it's not your wife, it's you. And you can take the national hearing test and find out it's you. Their biggest barrier is getting people to take the test. While it only costs $5, they're finding the target audience is hesitant to enter credit card information online. Making the test available for free would remove that barrier, but it's unclear how the effort would be funded. It could be a part of something like Medicare or Medicaid. Uh, it's such a tiny amount, I computed, that if every Medicaid customer or Medicare uh, was charged one penny, we could fund the whole country for free. In the meantime, people will have to pay in order to find out whether their hearing is adequate. Your score for your right ear was within the normal range. And my dad was pleasantly surprised by his results. In the normal range for both ears. Are you surprised? Yeah, I am. Sounds like he won't be turning down that music anytime soon. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Barbara Brozier.
So based on your results, the test tells you whether you need to make an appointment with an audiologist. I was surprised by my dad's results too, but even more surprised to learn that I am apparently suffering from hearing loss in at least one ear. And Joe, scientists say it's not just the people who are 65 and older. Young people are also prone to hearing loss as well. All right. Thank you very much, Barbara.